Hi everyone, thank you for joining this use case. This use case will relate to getting information from a laboratory data system, which is in CSV format because the database is quite restricted and doesn't allow the client to access data directly from the database and convert that to OPC. So what we're trying to illustrate to you today is firstly how and what technology we can use to convert CSV information to OPC UA information and then demonstrate that to you a little bit in order to understand the platform that we use and also how we integrate that into a, a OPC UA environment. So without further ado, in the next few minutes, we will go through a practical use case. So as I indicated, we have a laboratory system, the test results, which is batch based or each and every test that happens, outputs a CSV file for limitative or limitation reasons because the, the vendor doesn't allow us to actually connect directly to the SQL backend. There's a requirement to, to, ex, uh, to make this information available to the production layer on the plant floor in overall dashboards and screens and into the, the SCADA and the HMI environment for the operators to make in-time decisions. So that's what the business case driving this whole component. And what we are do, using today is OPC Router as one of the software toolbox products to enable this. So in short, we will achieve this results by doing the following. We will configure OPC Router to point to a network location. In this instance, it's a FTP type server that I've created just from a demonstration perspective. Read a CSV file from this location. Go through the file, basically parse the file and take out the bits and pieces that we require, which resembles the quality and the sugar cold content and the salt content, etc. Make this ver uh, values that we read out of the CSV file into variables and then take those variables and serve them out with the built in OPC UA server that OPC router has for other OPC UA compliant clients to actually consume the data. So without further ado, let's get to the practical side of this. So dragging over on this side, I have got OPC router. I'll give you a very, very quick rundown in terms of how we approach this. And then I'll show you what I've built and also some food for thought and some alternatives that one can keep in mind. So firstly, on the left hand side, we have a couple of things. So I always refer to the little plug piece. So in this case, we need to set up the plugins that we require. So you can see there's a plethora of different plugins. In this instance, let's quickly think about it. We are linking to a OPC UA server. So as I mentioned, there's router has the ability to create its own UA server. So I've literally just connected and said, look, give it a name, give it a port. It automatically creates its endpoint address. You can decide the uh, and decide on the security options. And you can decide what you want to output as part of the server, which in this case is the global variables, as well as the performance data, which I'll go in a little bit later. So we've created that plugin. That's as easy as that. We also, if you remember on the beginning of the side, we have the CSV files. And as I mentioned before, the CSV is hosted by a shared environment in a network, which is pretty much nothing else than an FTP server. So I've created a little FTP server called Throbolatory System, which goes to my little NAS drive that I've got locally. Also created the endpoints and the usernames and the passwords, etc. And I can quickly check the connection and it says, great, I am connected. Now, that is the first decisive uh, part of OPC Router is to decide, to decide where you get your data from and where you want the data to end up. On the right hand side, you see we have a, an array of transfer objects, as we call it. So we've got ETL and tool objects to create things and parse through files and create JSON payloads or read JSON payloads or CSV files, etc. And then we have all these data sources and destinations that we bring into this whole connection element that we create. So from a practical perspective, if I go into my connections that I've created. I've got this new connection called lab data to SCADA. So I'm going to take you this very, very quickly. So we'll start off with this little network read file object. So as I mentioned, the network read means it's pointing to the FTP server that we've created. And um, it pretty much is looking for a file. So what I'm just going to do 
is just drag a blank object over to show you what it looks like on the inside. So literally, I tell this object, point it to the laboratory system position that I've created. Do I have a static or a dynamic file path? And what am I reading, binary or text? And what do I do if I don't find the file? So I'll show to you how I've configured this little read object. I literally just said, look, point it to my laboratory system. Look in this specific directory for something called labdata.csv and read it as text. Easy as that. Then the second object we use is what we call the little CSV object. So dragging over a CSV object, it's actually quite intelligent for what it can do. So first of all, you tell this object, look, um, are you CSV in terms of separator? Are you, are you fixed with file? What do I do? Do I read everything? Do I read the first part? Do I read the last part? Does it contain a header? Where is the header that contains a header? Well, in this case, it might be line one, but the data starts on line two. Take white spaces out, etc., etc., etc. So you configure everything that you've got in here. And the last element you then do is to say, well, what is the information, pretty much the columns in that CSV format, what is the information I'd like to get from this? So I can literally just go say, look, I've got a quality percentage or whatever the case might be. Don't even care about the data type. And that's it. And it creates me the quality percentage. So to save time, I've created the CSV object already. And as you can see, we've got a header at line two. I know my data starts at line three. I'm using comma separators. And these are the five parameters or attributes that actually co is contained in the lab system output, which we would like to obviously convert to variables and then serve out as OBC UA tags or items. So once I've configured that, you could see that ooh, it says there's the columns. I just then dragged over a little variable object, which is just a simple object, creates a little bit of a placeholder, and it allows you to also do further calculations, etc. And once I've created that variable object, the last component is really just the OPC data object, which I literally say, look, I've got in this case a OPC router UA server. I could also send it to pre-configured items in existing OPC UA servers, like a top server, for example. But in this case, we're serving it out using the built-in server, like I said. And I can say, look, I've got the tags created on my server, so there is all the objects that's already been created. Um, it's actually sitting under the global variables component, and I just go select what it is that I need. And we end up with something like this, where we literally say, if I can just move over to the right a little bit, we've got all the attributes already mapped to OPC items, and then we just connect the lines by literally dragging things left and right. And if we did everything correctly here, this should represent a functional flow that reads a file, parses the file, send whatever we are interested in to variables, and serve it out as, as UA uh, items. The last bit of information that I haven't covered yet is right at the bottom of this transfer objects, and that is called the triggers. Because the last answer or last question we need to ask is, how often and based on what should this connection or this read, parse, variable, serve, how often should that happen? So for that, we have this selection of different trigger object, objects we can use with an OPC router. So the simplest trigger object is something like a time trigger object. You say, look, go every 1,000 milliseconds or one second, go to that folder and see if there's something new, do whatever it's supposed to do. What we, what I have used in this instance is what we call a network file access trigger, which literally says, go to that folder, monitor that folder every 10 seconds, include the subtech directories if you want to. And if you see something with the suffix of a CSV file, then this is what you need to do. And once you've processed that file, move the file to the processed folder which is a subfolder sub of the folder we're monitoring, and prepend the file name so that we end up with all the raw files, but with a specific timestamp in there. And that is as easy as that. So when we now say, look, we've done the configuration, we can click on Make Changes Productive. We've not made any changes here, and we click on Make Changes Productive again. 
router will now go into a mode where it says, okay, I am now in a runtime environment. Now you would see there's some readings already in terms of um, what we've done before, but we're going to play around with this now. So when I move over this little screen here, you would recall that our uh, path that we were listening to was this lab data folder. The process folder was all the files that I've cre already created. So I'm just going to, for practical purposes, copy something. You would see my new folder says it's empty. And I will just paste that in there and take the appended timestamp out. Now, what we will do with this lab data file is just do a few changes. So, for example, we'll give it today's date, but we'll make it in the future. Why not? So let's say 1530. Let's change our product. The product could now be gummy berry juice or whatever you want to call it. The sugar content, we can make a little bit more acceptable. So we can make 75%. Um, we can make our salt content 25% and the quality we can say is super. So that kind of resembles, and if I save it, so that kind of resembles a typical CSV file that comes out of that lab system. So if you recall, the little object we have here that says, let me monitor that specific folder could now kick in every 10 seconds. So if I move that over there and I go put focus back into this environment, we should see after 10 seconds, a little dot, which means my connection is fired. It found a new file and our prepended and, and variables and information that we're actually receiving out of that CSV file will now change and update to gummy berry juice with all the respective um, attributes. We've got gummy berry juice, 75 sugar, 25 salt, and a super quality. And as our connection says, we are then taking those variables we've created and we are serving it out as OPC U8 items. So you can see I've created a quick UA connection with an external UA client. I can see gummy berry juice. I can see the quality, etc. So for practical purposes, let's just go create another one. I'm literally just doing it on this side quickly, which you don't have view over. And for now, we're going to just say we shall give it another timestamp and we shall call it uh, blue juice and the sugar we will make 88 percent and 13 percent for the salt and so so again for the quality so i've saved the csv file and have i now moved that into the new folder 10 seconds to 15 seconds later we will probably start seeing the information coming through into the ua client saying we should have blue juice with a so-so and whatever we've given with a 1531 timestamp now obviously because it's being served out as an opc ua set of items the HMI down on the plant floor that's connected to a UA server that's also reading stuff from the PLC on the plant floor, etc., can now consume this information and they can be, this can be displayed in the HMI graphics that's actually served to the operator to make in-time decisions. So that is, in a nutshell, how one, in a very, very simplistic environment and, and method, create OPC UA items and real-time information from CSV files coming from a plethora of different data sources. As a food for thought and a last parting thought before we end the session, what some clients also try to do is to now say, well, in this instance, because I'm not allowed as the end user to, to scratch and extract data directly from the database of this lab system, nothing stops them to use this tool and also use one of the, the many objects we have in terms of database management and database inserts. So if I literally just go search for database objects, I could, theoretically speaking, parallel to that in where I build the connection, take a DB insert object. And if I had a database configured, which might not be the case here, select a laboratory database and an associated table with that. And in parallel of serving and creating that CSV to OPC route, I can also store this data for future reference in a database. 
Thank you very much for listening. We look forward to any questions you have and um, we will share more use cases as time continues. Thank you.